What's going on, good folks? Welcome to episode 14 of Gretch Generations. My name is Sean Horton. I am a Gretch artist, and I am so happy to be able to interview uh, someone who is relatively new on the scene, at least new to the Gretch scene, I guess. Uh, one of my heroes, the amazing Nathaniel Townsley. You! Yo, 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 What's what up, man? Hey, man, come on. Hello, come everybody. On, stop, How brother. y'all doing? <laughs> you know this ain't, man, you know we just talking. This ain't no interview. <laughs> just, just so you're aware, uh, people right. that are watching, brace yourselves. Just, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. A little, little rambunctious, but, you know, this is, hey, this is what happens. <laughs> This is what happens when you get us together. <laughs> Seriously. What's going on, man? How yes, you doing? Sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? Man, cold chilling. Well, not necessarily. Not as cold chilling as you probably are. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro. It's, it's really cold over there right now, huh? Really cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. Cold. Yeah. I'm not even gonna mention yeah. what the weather is over here. So I'm just, we're just gonna move on past that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We don't want to stop this over. We having an attitude, <laughs> dude. Dude, like, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, I don't. No smoke. Nobody wants any smoke from no one. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, we're alive. You know, hey. Okay. We are live. <laughs> we are live and we are here. Okay. We're here live today. Live on Generation Gretch. <laughs> yes, you see so so uh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Yo, man. Yes, so sir. Have, yes, sir. I have, I have to say, like, this is an honor because my first time ever hearing you play or even knowing you was uh the modern two that what the modern drummer uh, the modern drummer festival in 2003 right and then i yeah, got a chance uh -huh. to meet you at the my first nam show you yes remember that? and that's where, and that's where i heard you <laughs> Dude. And I was like, okay what in the world is going on here <laughs> listen i was i was trying to ask you the question to myself i was like listen can you Tell me how to do. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I need help. But yeah, sure enough, and like, then, like, and and and, and 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 everybody. That's how we started. Sean lying to me, talking about he had no idea what he was doing. Yeah, uh, so you how, know, you got it on a lie, but it's okay, man. So I forget. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> It's like, hey man, I got this endorsement. I got this endorsement. These people like me. These people like me. Uh, I'm relatively certified. I'm really, really new. Very green, like leprechaun, Le leprechaun. But you can trust me, man. You can trust me. Just tell me everything you know. Everything. <laughs> man, you killing, brother. We had a great time too. We had Dude. a great time, man. Listen, man, nah, that, 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 a great that, time. It's like we man. know each other all our life. <laughs> Dude, that honestly, like that, that's the thing that kind of got me because it was so natural. It felt like I was talking to someone that I've been looking up to sitting behind, like sitting um, behind the drums watching as I was in church, like the church kids, you know what I mean? Like and to finally get a chance oh, yeah. to be school, it was like, yo, this guy is really, he's really who he plays he is. You know what I mean? Like, you know how... When you hear somebody play and they sound like they're either very giving or very about their team, or they sound right. like they're very about themselves and their drums, you can hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. dude. Like that. I think we had, don't we have a video? Do we have a video of him, 2003, Modern Festival? Oh, my God. Yeah, oh my I know gosh. that bass. Really? That's, that, that's that GL. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> there it is, there it is, there it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. Can I ask? I, okay, so we're just going to just jump right into it because I have questions, bro. Like, 
cut. Hey, bro, come on. You know how we do. Let's just talk. Let's go for it. So how, like, how did you even get approached to do that? Well, it was funny because um, there was there was a, a gentleman by the name of uh, how I got introduced to modern drummer on that level was yeah. there's a gentleman by the name of Rich Watson. Rich, Watson. I was playing Rich Watson. I was playing. He doesn't work with him anymore, but I was playing a gig in New York with Corey Glover. Okay, <clears throat> in color and. He was actually there to check out the percussionist, the great Daniel Sadownik. Yeah. Who was playing with him, I mean, had his torso or something like that. Oh, sick. And so he, yeah, so he went, he's an amazing player. And he, and so he was there to check him out. So, of course, they were headlining. So we were playing right before them. And so after the set, he came up to me and was like, oh my God. Who are you? And why is it that I don't know you? I was like, I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and we just started talking. We just started <laughs> and we just started talking. And uh he told me he worked with Modern Drummer. He said, Man, I'm I feel I, I almost feel embarrassed that we don't even know you like this. So wow. he, he said, I'm man. here to check out somebody else and do a piece on somebody yeah. else, but take my number. Let me get your number. Let's stay in touch. <clears throat> Love. As, that's actually Love. how it started. And so he took some, he came to a couple of my gigs, took some pictures. And then um, in 2000, he did a piece in Modern Drummer on me called Up and Coming Drummer, Nathaniel Townsend. And I had a, a nice little spread in, in 2000. So fast forward in 2003, <clears throat> there was a drummer that was supposed to do it but somehow they couldn't get it going. And so a drum, my drum company at the time told Rick Van Horn, like, well, we have a guy, he's playing at the booth at such and such time, come and check him out. And he came and checked me out and he said, okay, that's the guy that can fill in. And boom, so yeah. I was actually a <clears throat> And that just, it was just, you know, just God would have it that it happened that way. And so, I was like, okay, you know, I called my brothers. I said, okay, hey man, let's just go there and play some music. I don't want to go in doing something over rehearsed or overdone, you know, because for me, music is so much of who we are and who I yeah. am. Like, I don't like, I don't like to present something that's just not honest. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. I was, oh, we're gonna go there and we're just gonna play. We're gonna be with musicians. We're put in all kinds of situations. Don't tell me we can't sit down and just play. Yeah, <laughs> so just yeah. play it. And it and it and it turned out to be something really beautiful. Oh man, it's something beautiful, bro. Happened, like man. that's how that happened. Dude, that that was uh that was inspiring. I didn't imagine this. You know how like you get ready for a, a midnight musical or a concert or like a Friday night. You know, con you know, you know the right. churches get together and have the concert. Oh yeah, right? dude. Oh yeah. You, would, you like you do stuff like that when you get ready, like after church or rehearsal, or like you get up with your boys like late Thursday night after choir rehearsal and just stay until midnight just to practice some stuff, right? That right. felt like like when I first moved out to LA and got hip to like the jam session scene, it felt uh -huh. like that. Like when I watched, like when I watched right. it, it was like, oh, what is this? And when I moved out to LA and I started getting hit to the scenes around here and how people like play and shed, not even shed, but like how they play mm -hmm. together here, it was that was my first right. introduction to that. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Okay. That was my first introduction. So I mean, like, I'm, so we're hearing like worship songs being like translated into like you know a tree like a like a trio setting, and I'm like, oh, right. Like awesome God in, 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 a, in a trio kind of vibe. Like, oh, <laughs> they're they're playing this pretty free. This is different. I'm never. This is way dope. Right. That was my first time seeing that. You know what I mean? And, and actually seeing wow. and understanding like what's happening. Like these guys are literally on the playground right now. Like they're playing Twenty One, but in front of all these people. You know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah, but like, I mean, that's we we you know again we we bounce off each other and we play off each other all the time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's you know I I mean for me when I think of uh, different venues that we play in, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? When people come to when people come to a live show, they want to experience the moment. Yeah, you understand I me. Mean? When we record. You know what I mean? Then you have to make that moment make sense in the, in like five minutes. Yeah, right, <clears throat> you know, right, right, right. Different venue, but when you come out to a live show, you know, it's all about your spirit being lifted and all about being in that moment. And so yeah. I really don't, I really don't, I really don't let musicians play as if music is some inside secret between musicians. Yeah, wow. That's Deja not what, go ahead. That's yeah. what it was created for. It's yeah. not what it was created for. It was mm. created for all of us to be able to be in one place and be lifted in that moment. You know, yeah. and we can write, we can write music. We, you know what I mean? We can write, we can arrange, we can't create a moment. A moment yeah. comes out of submission. Yeah. A moment doesn't come out of, you know, overriding it and trying to create. The yeah. moment comes out of being submitting to the music. Yeah, I like that. What better way to know? What better way to submit than for it to be just raw, live, and just be like, okay, we got ears, we got eyes, let's communicate. And mm. if the audience see us, then they know that we're communicating with them, and now we all can be lifted together. And for me, yeah. that's what music is about. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Golly, it's, it's I, a pro, I man. It's approach music from that moment, from from that aspect. Yeah, I love that. But a and lot of musicians, evident. a lot of musicians, yeah, a lot of musicians play music as if it's just some inside secret between musicians, you know. And that's and that's you know, nothing wrong with it's nothing wrong with having music like that for musicians too, because there's a arena for that as well. Yeah, you know, I'm not dog. I'm not dogging anybody's arena. All sure. I'm saying is just be, I'm just be honest with who you are and what it's about. Mm. So that there's a variety because the music is for the world. It's a big world. It's you know, all that's inclusive. why we all don't sound the same. Yeah. All, you know, not. that's why we all don't sound the same. God knows or not, the world not, that he created. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So live in your truth and if your truth yeah. is is this your truth is this if your truth is that then it's that but it's a big enough world for everybody to get support you we can yeah. never run out of support yeah yeah we can run we can run we can run out we you know what i mean we can't but we can ruin a brotherhood or a sisterhood if it's done with the wrong spirit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh that's so, so good. which we gonna choose are we gonna uh, so, so which one are we gonna choose? Are we gonna choose to are we gonna choose to be together or not? It's yeah. really that simple. Yeah. What about wow. you, man? What made you go to the West Coast? That's what that's what I want to know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to do the list down to here, okay? It's a long story. Okay, okay. Let me try to. Mm. All right, it, so, well, it's, I mean, music scene, you know, it's a different scene. It's a different, you know, so, you know, and included with music, man. our story and as well, because that helps the next generation know that they can make it through whatever, you know, yeah. and be successful, you know, because yeah. that takes some courage to go to a whole nother place. But then also, you know, have your own space and your own name, and then Bro. become, you know, the big don't heart like you are. So please let the people. Please, please, <laughs> dude. I mean, so if if I'm gonna be like 100% honest, and I always try to be transparent as much as I possibly can, I almost didn't make uh -huh. it out here, bro. Wow, I almost didn't make it out here, and I mean, I mean, like on the last day. To, I got hit to this school called the LA Music Academy from a student of mine. Uh -huh. um, 
And he was like, yeah, they have like a little summer program camp and, you know, uh, you should come check it out. And that the and I looked at like, you know, what was going on on the website and I saw like applied sight reading. I was like, oh, this could be cool because I mm -hmm. obviously had issues with my sight reading. Church boy, you know what I mean? I didn't have much opportunity mm -hmm. to, to go to school for for music. The schools that I went to didn't have mm -hmm. finances for, for a music programs. So by the time I got to, mm -hmm. to high school, the high school that I went to had a, a good music program. You know, my mm -hmm. brothers and their friends was there. But when I got there, the music program was damn near like, excuse my language, but it was like like Sister Act 2. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that was our class. Like yeah, it was yeah, three yeah. of us. You know what I mean? It was three of us in the class that were musically inclined that was going to church and singing and playing and whatever all the time. The rest of the kids was kind of like, uh -huh. I like to dabble. But it our teacher was like, you know, she was definitely Sister Mary Clarence. You know what I mean? Right. Like, full on Sister right. Mary Clarence, bro. Like full on. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> It was special, man. But like, we didn't have that. So I saw wow. that and was like, yeah, let me go check it out. I would like to go check it out. But the, the camp started the next month. I It was $300 mm -hmm. or whatever. I didn't have the money to do it. Uh, uh -huh. My student, God bless him. You know what I mean? Uh, and his, fa his father was like, he called me after the lesson, after I went home. He said, hey, so I was told that you want to go to mm -hmm. this camp. I was like, yeah, sure. It would be nice, but I don't have the time or the money to do it. He said, I will yeah. take care of your hotel stay and your flight ticket. You can just take care of the registration. All you got to do is just keep teaching my son. Wow. Wow. So I'm like, oh, OK. Um, sh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> let's do it right now. So, wow. OK. So you know what I mean? We come like we're, we're coming. You and I come from the same schooling of like, faith if that you know me if i would have just put that in right. there like i see i hear yeah. that happen my first my first inclination is he's on the move he's moving right. fast i don't know what's happening mind you i say about a couple months prior i got rejected twice from the same school that i went to go audition to wow and, I, and that's wow. in philly i'm in rochester new york wow. that's in philly you know what i mean and I wanted to go there. I got rejected once in high school, and once when I went back mm -hmm. when, I, when I went back when I was in college in community college. Man, and then, that, and then this happened. Wow. I'm gonna try to. We're gonna try to bring it bring it down to this right now. We're gonna try to bring it down. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, get, brother. Go ahead, man. I, yo, I get to the camp. I say Monday. I'm meeting all the teachers. I'm playing. I'm meeting the students. I'm making friends. Uh. Um, but I'm also hearing about this teacher that that works there. He's the dean of students there. His name is Mike Shapiro. Everybody's like, "Yo, uh -huh. you gotta beat Mike. Mike is this. Mike is that. Mike plays for you know Earth, Wind, and Fire. Jessica Simpson. He's in the studio with all these people. This is where I am. I'm like, oh yeah, who is this? Okay, cool. I'm like, it'd be great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, Ralph Humphrey. Oh man, all these students like, man, you should meet Mike. You should meet Mike. I'm like, all right, cool. The last day of the camp. We we'll bring it all the way down to the last day. We're not even gonna deal with the, the front half. Last day of the camp, uh -huh. we have a. We, they put us in bands at the top of the camp, and they gave us songs to practice and play. And I'm like you know, these are like kids from all walks of life, like different, you know, from hobbyists to like guys that like to play, right? Right. Last the last day, we have a concert. I see this guy. We're, we're all in the performance, the performance hall. I see this guy walking around, white dude, shell to Adidas. Plain white shirt, some jeans, walking around like he owned the joint. I don't know who this guy is, but I've never wow. seen him the whole week. Never seen him. Just like, just swag, swagged out. Like, just like he owned the spot. Right. I got some shell toe Adidas. Right. That's important. Shell wow. toe Adidas. Okay. Of I'm course. Of course. <laughs> you know, no one's we to run DMC. Much respect. <laughs> I pay attention to these things, right? Okay, so and, and much respect, and we got too much respect to Mike Shapiro. If people oh. don't re remember Mike Shapiro, the whole GRP connection. Whoa! So we all from way back then. So he we and he's killing too. <laughs> so anyway, back to the story. Just 
give you a little, little something there. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to go back to to go back to what we mentioned before in our last conversation a couple of weeks ago, relationships. Right. How relationships, right. Wow. Right, right. So right. so I so I play that I had superstition, right? The late they gave uh, me like an eight bar solo at the end. I play and I'm like, all right, cool. And I come back and I sit down and I post it up against the wall with a guy that I met early in the camp, my man Aaron. He's like, hey, uh -huh. Mike Shapiro's here. I'm like, wow. Where? I'm like, where? He's like, it's that guy. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's the guy that was walking around like he owned the joint. Bro, I freeze. Wow. I froze up just like, like I saw a ghost. I froze up like, Cause I didn't, cause I wasn't thinking that he was out in the crowd as I was doing his solo. I wasn't. I'm just playing, right? Just playing. I right. get up. Right. I walk out. <laughs> I, I walk out of the performance hall. He walks out behind me, and we start talking. He's like, <laughs> "Oh man," he's like, "Yeah, where you from? I'm from like Rochester." He's like, "Where you from?" He's like, "I'm from DC." Mm, wow. Makes sense. It's like, yeah, you like you like Marvel. Right. Side. You sound you sound like you listen to Calvin Rogers. I'm like. How do you know about Kevin Rogers? And he's like, what? 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 <laughs> like, he, like, who are you, dude? Like, yeah, man. Like, and he told right. me, like, long story short, try to be shorter. He told me, he said, he said, uh, you need to be out here, and we're gonna make it easy for you to get out here. Wow. And bro, I say this is July. Mind you, early in the early on in that camp. Uh, God rest his uh -huh. soul, Sherman Ferguson, great jazz drummer. He wow. gave me, um, he gave me yeah. a, uh, he he walked in to a jazz uh, workshop that we were doing that he was that he was doing, and he gave me and my students some applications to the school. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Yo, wow. we need some more, we need some more young brothers like you here." It's like, "What you what you think about doing?" And I was like, at the time, I was like, "I don't know what I'm gonna do." I got rejected from these schools mm -hmm. back in back in back east. I'm not really doing anything. I think I might move to Buffalo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's closer. That's where some to me some of the dopest musicians are. I want to go play with them. Right. And he was like, "Yo, you should come out here." And I was like, "All right, cool." And then that happened later on <clears throat> that week. Right. So this is say this is July. I this is just in the July. Hold on, just, hold on, just, just, uh, just, you know, for people that don't, that, that don't understand what's going on, mother that just walked past, just to hey, let you know, okay? <laughs> everybody like, everybody like, okay, who's this big behind woman walking across the street? That's my mom. <laughs> He's on the phone and she's getting ready to go out and do some running and all that stuff. That's mine. So, oh, yes. So <laughs> Ain't not, ain't nothing crazy going on here. That's my mother, people. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> okay, go ahead, man. That is amazing. I know what's going on? <laughs> hey, mama. How you doing? So I said, "Hey, Dag Nevin." Nah, hey, man. I but, definitely will. I definitely will. Bro, long story short, man. Like, yo. I, that was in July. Mm -hmm. I say mid mid August. I was back in Los Angeles, uh -huh. starting orientation. Wow, starting orientation and it happened just that quick, dude. And and it was like, yo, I, you know, from like as a, you know, as a believer, I was like, yo, I believe God, man. I don't know, I don't know what what's gonna happen or what's gonna come from this, but I'm the only one over here. There's nobody else from my family but over see here. I'm the, See, here's the thing, and I, I really want to talk about this because I think it's important for this new for this generation of drummers. You just sure. hit on a couple of things that are very important in life, not just playing. Yeah. How to deal with rejection. Oof. And how to uh. deal with something that when you're in the moment and when God places something in front of you to just move and not yeah. overthink it. Yeah. Because these are rules. These are rules in life, not just playing. Because yes. guess what? If you feel rejected and playing, you stop being yourself. And if you don't move in the moment in music, you miss it. So on, these man. are relative with us life, but they're relative in music as well. So talk about that because 
people need to know how to deal with those elements of life so they can continue to excel and excel and be exactly what God had them to be. Bro, so I have two situations. One with me being on the rejected side. Um, uh-huh. Well, we, it won't, won't be on the rejected side and one with me trying to help someone get through being rejected. Right. Right. Um, right. I've definitely been fired. You know, and it's, like we've I, all we've all been there. Yeah. Like you know, I, in life, we've all been there. Yeah. So, yeah. Same yeah. with me. <laughs> Word up. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, you you lose gigs. And especially out uh-huh. here in different types of ways. Like, bro, I got asked to re-audition for a gig that I was already doing for about three months at the time. Wow. And then I got it. And then I lost it. Like in the same day. Right. You know wow. what I mean? And oh, yeah. Happened, oh, yeah. It happened so quick to the point where it's like, and I know... I feel like I know why it happened. And that's another thing to like character. You know what I mean? Like watching what you say and Definitely. being mindful of what you say around people, uh, just around people in general, just being mindful of what you say. Man, right, I, right. I, 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 after the audition, I expressed how frustrating it was to have to go through it to. Mm-hmm. One of the guys that I, one of the guys that I was, and I am still cool with to this day, but the the uh, the artist's assistant was standing there listening in to the conversation. Right. So that got back to her. So when I got home mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling all these people like, "Hey, can you send my drums to Center Stage and this and that and so forth." As I'm making those calls, I get a call back saying, "Yeah, we decided to go a different direction." Yeah, and that that all was a result of how I was dealing with that rejection, or even dealing with like the whole situation. It's gonna be a lot of jacked up situations cat go people go through in this industry, but to be able to. Right. <clears throat> and keep on moving like mm, it's nothing I ate that what's next and there she goes again <laughs> <laughs> right <Go ahead. laughs> but like but, 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 be, but, but being able to, t- to take it and keep it moving we've gotten to a, I've I felt I I realized in myself I've taken for such a long time rejection as you don't want to play with me anymore uh-huh. Like a kid, you know what I mean. Like like a kid. It's, yeah. It's, if you right. take it down to the, to the bare to the bare roots of it, you don't want to play right. with me anymore. Now I feel right. rejected and I feel hurt, and now I'm taking it personally. You know what I mean? Whereas right. really, in 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 the, in, in, in the, the grand scheme of things, what you were doing wasn't working for that situation, and that's all that is. That's all that it is. You know that's what I mean? It? That's, that's it. it. You have to learn. I felt like I okay. That wasn't working for that situation. Where did I go wrong, or how can I be better at a at, at this thing? You know what I mean. You learn it. Right. Mm-hmm. You take it with you into the next situation. So when that situation hum- comes up again, you know how to address it with <laughs> with grace. You know what I mean. With with a sense of dignity. Right. Right. Being upset about it. Right. Right. So now when people look at right. you like they're expecting you to be all irate and mean and just upset. When they see you handle it with grace and like, oh no, nah, it's all it's no problem. They see that, they start second guessing their decision. Right. You know what I mean? <clears throat> second, the second situation, right. I had this, I had I had one of my young boys um get get fired from a gig. And he was telling me, I we were talking on the phone, and he was telling me about it. And I felt like a sort of sense of like, you know, like godly encouragement coming over me. Mm-hmm. It's a real thing. Like, you know what? It is it is real. It is real. Right? And he, and he actually God God actually shows up with his fist ball duck just like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but some cats, some cats, some cats don't know the difference between and, my, and this is not to say like, oh yeah, God speaks through me all the time and like oh nah, it's not that at all. 
I right. just really felt like, yo, right. this is good for you. It was, that, it was that moment. It was that moment. It was that moment. Yeah. I was like, this is, right. I'm, glad, I'm glad you lost that gig. This is good for you. And he was like, what? What do you mean? Why would you say that? And I was like, no, no, no. Like, no, no, no. It's not that. He was like, nah, man, I'm going to kill this industry. And this is not. And he kind of went off on a tangent like a chainsaw. And I'm like, uh, 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 I'm trying to tell you. What I wanted to say to him was, you got knocked down now. You get up. If you thought this is hard, when you get up, when you get hit again, it may not be as hard for you. You know what I mean? So you'll be able to right. go into, you need to go into the next situation stronger, knowing what you, knowing where you went wrong, so you won't go wrong again. You know what I mean? So when you do go into right, the next right. situation, you'll be able to face it with a lot more strength and more integrity, feeling like, yo, a, a, a lot more efficacy, really, it's one of my favorite words. Knowing right. that you can actually handle the situation, you know what I mean? Like it, it, you know. But he took it. He took it. You know. He took it personally, and like you know, we're not quite cool like that. We like we used to be. But I still, I'm still in my man's corner, and I still feel that way with anybody. It is anybody. If you lost the gig, awesome. <clears throat> What's next? What's next? What have you learned from that situation, and how are you going to go into the next situation stronger? So you right. don't meet that situation right. again, because it's right. this, the one thing I realize is like, yes, we're, we mean music with all of our heart. We really, really, really mean music. We mean what we do. We take our positions as the drummer and the, fo and the foundation of this bandstand very, very serious. Right. Um, right. And not everybody has that same perspective. You know what I mean? Not everybody's in it for the music. Not everybody's in it for. Or whatever reason, some people are jaded. Somebody that's what that's what I that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, man. <clears throat> that, not, some people. I'm, some people are in it. Some people are in it to what they think it can give them. Yeah, so a lot of people are in it for the music. You understand? They look for the attention. They look for the money. They look for the status. They look for just the opportunity to, to be called boss. Maybe mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. other areas in their life. They're not MDs, so they get an MD gig, and all of a sudden that becomes their playground, as you say, and now it becomes a bully situation. Come but on, see, man! Because we started, because I, I learned that we started early in life playing, coming from mm -hmm. church. You know, people don't under, and some people don't understand that playing in church, the choir was always rehearsing and preparing for a record. It right. wasn't, it was, it, presentation was everything. Everything yeah. to be tight, everything's got to be sharp. So it wasn't to showcase my chops. It wasn't to showcase somebody else's chops. It was how we sound as a team. Because when we go to this program, there's going to be 20 choirs there. And what's going to make, what's going to, what's going to make us different from 20 other choirs? So we yeah. worked on our sound. We were yep. taught and the guy before us that we that we admired had you know Joel Smith had a sound Come Bill on, Maxwell man. sound you understand Talk what I mean you know what like, so all these guys all the uh, the people that we grew up with when it comes to gospel music have a sound you just mentioned Calvin Rogers he has yeah. a sound yeah you understand what I mean so yeah the thing is, is that any anybody can chop out that's not the, yeah. what's your sound Owned. And yeah. who, and that's what I mean. Honestly, with who you are is because the thing is, is that no one can ever, no one pays me to play. Yeah. Music is a gift from God. I have music is in me. I am the instrument, not mm -hmm. the drums. Yep. The drums is what, what I use to get what I'm saying out. But mm -hmm. we are instrument, not the actual physical. We are the instrument because if I wasn't on the drums, I still could tap something out because that's what God gave me. So that's, one, no yeah. one pays me. To play. You pay me for the situation. The situation is I got to get on this tour bus. I got to stay in this hotel. I got these amount of rehearsals, these amount of sound checks, these amount of shows. So you paying me for this for the situation. You don't pay Every me for a gift. Yeah freely given to me yeah you understand what i mean so yeah. when you when you 
understand who you are in this thing, then those situations you learn how not to take personally. Mm. Whoa. Sometimes That's, a person yeah. is just sometimes a person is just right for that situation. They yeah. may not be the best musician, but it's the best, it's the they're right for that situation because maybe that situation is not as real as you are. Yeah. Oof. Who needs <laughs> who needs real? Who need who needs real in a world of fake? Ooh, talk so about sometimes it, people are hired because of that. And then sometimes Ooh. people are hired. All but it's all a personality trait. 90% of what happens in music is off stage. It's not on stage. Facts. That only counts for 10 But if people yeah. don't like you, they don't want to work with you. Facts. And we all know a lot of people who are super talented, but they don't work. Facts. And so you can work on, you got to, there's, there's different kinds of chops in this world. There's your... <laughs> Your chops for your your job, and then there's your chops as a human being. Talk about and it. Both, bro. <laughs> both of them are important. So yes. if you lack if you lack this as a human being, but you got all the chops in the world, you still not gonna work as much as you could. Yeah. So yeah, work on your chops on as much as you work on chops on the drums work on those same chops as being a human being. And yes. guess what? Gigs will happen way differently. Yep. You have, you have to say a lot. Yeah. At the end of the day. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Now I'm saying that you're, you're like, when it, when I'm saying like when, when it's so spot on because now when you're dealing with yourself and self-improvement and trying to like grow within yourself, you will have to versus wondering mm -hmm. where the gigs are. <laughs> The main thing you'll be doing is saying no to them. That'll be your biggest issue. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Saying no, like, oh, I really right. want to do this, but I can't because I have this going on because you're that much in demand. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, right. It, you know, those people and those people and don't, the, you know what? I used to tell people, I said, people who are really successful, there's a, there's, you know, we hear a lot of people, we hear about a lot of people, mm. you know. All the time, but the real people, you don't hear about them. No. They just work and do their thing. Their life yeah. is not blasted everywhere. Else. You know what I mean? There's a there's also millions of people who go about just being good people and doing their job. Oh, and okay, and they're and they're okay with that. Blue collar. I was you know what I call. mean? Straight exactly. Up Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They go. They go to work, and they're cool with that. Like they're not yeah. wrapped up into you know, what their name is or how much this or this that. They, they just go to work. They're thankful for for a good life. They go in. They do their job, and they you know they don't need you know they don't need much. Yeah. Mike Mike Shapiro like, told me that we we live in a generation we live we live in a generation now of excess. Excess yeah. doesn't mean success. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. yeah. So it's Mike, just you know. yeah. Mike put me on about that. He told me he, when I when I first got on him and uh, him and a, right. my my old uh, artist rep. Uh, he told me art. You know, my mentor was like, "Yo, just keep moving your wrist, right." It's like, right. well, like, you know, like I'm a young cat. Like, what can I do to help the company? And then it's still like I still ask. Andrew will tell you this. I'll still ask those questions like, yo, right. what can I do to help the company? What, how more, how much more can I be of use to you guys? You know what I mean? And right, right. to say, like, you know, just keep playing. Don't worry. Like Mike told me, he's like, yo, just play. Don't worry about all the extra stuff. Don't worry about trying to please anybody or appeasing anybody. You do your job. And right. do it to the best of your ability. Right. Be cordial. Be nice. Be cool. Do your job. Go right. on to the next thing. You don't have to do right. anything else. Because right. like it's it's like, oh man. And you just talked about us being in faith, right? Your it dog. says your gift will grow for you. It didn't say all of the shenanigans. It said your gift. Yeah, so not my just not, not, yeah. Operate and operate in your gift. Yeah, you operating your gift 
doors will open that you will, you know what I mean? Because there's, there's, I don't, you know, and I'm thankful that I have, that I have the career that I have, yeah. but I never, I never want to brag about gigs because in the reality of it, that's just, that's just of availability. Sometimes yeah. people hire me the next one available. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So how yeah. am I going to brag about something when I was just available for it? I don't know why they hired me. Maybe they hire me because somebody told them. That. You know what I mean? I just go in and be me and do what I do. The rest, that's it's from a gift. But just being hired to do that. But then yeah. you start getting people to say, hey, man, you know what? I like your personality and I like what you have to say. I want you on my record. Now yeah. that's something different. Right? So that's I want you on my different. record. On yeah. My DVD. I want you know, because everything else is availability. Yeah. Okay. So wait, before we go so on, it's before, like, get, before go we ahead, go, brother, on, go on, ahead, go ahead. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, man. Come on, come on. Because this is a good segue. This is a really, really, really good segue. Uh -oh, I want to talk uh -oh, about uh -oh, uh -oh, it's a good segue. Now. I'm saying come on no, now. No. We'll All right. Uh -huh, we'll uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Come on. Come on, DJ. Come so, on. <laughs> so people calling you for what <laughs> you do, right? And you just showing up. Um, can I tell you, you showed up for that Joe Zawinar, bro? <laughs> you showed up. I appreciate you, brother. You you showed up you, for Minister Zawinar, brother. I mean, like. <laughs> I, I saw I saw a clip of you guys, man, and he was just like introducing the band at the end of the show, and he's just dancing, and he calls you up like from Brooklyn, New York, like he's just going on. It's like he's three generations in the thing, you Townsley, three, three generations, <laughs> and like yo, you're going for blood. He just sitting there like, uh, just shaking a shaker, just like, just like yeah, and I'm like yo. <laughs> Can uh, how, I, I need I need some stories, bro? Okay, I need I need a favorite bro. story about that working with Zalanol, man. I need I, I need some I need some stories about that dude because that's uh, that's a school, got, bro. That's a school. How how I got how I got there again? I didn't know Joe Zalanol personally. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking off stage. Yeah, he didn't know yeah. me personally. You know what I mean? I knew him from his music. You know. I didn't do anything that was so relevant for him to know me. So I knew him. He didn't know me at all. Okay. Yeah. At yeah. the time, Omar was in a band, then Paco Seri at that time. So they were kind of back and forth. And yeah. I knew Omar because I actually did some work with his brother. And then that's how mm. we met. Okay. The brother named Khabib, uh, who was a nice bass player, man. Nice. So I was actually recording you know, and he introduced me to Omar. Oh, he brought Omar down to this gig I used to do, and Omar King would come. He came in and sat up right up front, and I'm sitting up there like shaking. <laughs> like I'm like, like first day of school. I'm like, oh my gosh. What? He didn't sit right up front. He didn't go like, back really? to the gig, go in the back of the club <laughs> or by the bar. You know what I mean? He wasn't there. He was front stage. Like legs, like, legs crossed. Dude, like this, you leg, don't do that legs. to somebody you don't know. Yeah, look at legs you like cross. Like and I'm like okay, <sighs> but again, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But again, <laughs> it's just I have to live in my truth, so I just have to be me. So I was like, yeah. okay, I shook myself and I was just me. After the first set, he came up to me and said, "Man." I love what you do, blah, 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 and, and, and I love your sound, and let's stay in touch. And we stayed in touch, and so mm. <clears throat> same thing. Richard Bona, when he first moved to New York, he came down because it's a cat from Paris. His name was JC. He's actually African, just like, just like Richard, but mm -hmm. they moved in Paris together. So when he got to New York, I joined his band. We start, I started playing with him, and... Richard would come and sit in. So that's how I met Richard Bone. This is like 95, okay? Fast forward yeah. 2000, Joe Zion needs a drummer. So Joe Zion was like, okay, who should I call? 
he had a conversation with Richard Boner and he had a conversation with Omar Hakeem and both of those guys commended me. Wow. The connections, the connections, bro. So Love that's it. how, so that's how that started. And so when, when, uh, when Joseph called me, I was like, you know, at that time, I ain't know nobody who talked like that. So I was like, hey, he left this message. Hey, Nathaniel, Joseph, you know, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I always oh, so I cool. had a conversation with these guys, and they, you know, uh, so it's uh, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> that's so spot on. Oh so, man, that's awesome. Yeah, so he, so the, he was like, come to my house at the time. He was in in a in a village, at, at, you yeah. know, living in the city. So he's like, come to my house. We'll play together. And that's and so for him, it was a music is a personality thing for him. He's the same. Mm. He was the same way. God, oh, and I learned so much from him about that. But it's it was a personality thing. So he's yeah. like, come to my house, play together, and that's that. So I get there, I get to his house, and we introduce and everything. He's like, okay, let's let's go play, you know, because he said I'll know you more after we play. So it wasn't like a whole conversation. Uh, that went that. on before that. It was an introduction, and it was like, okay, let's go to my studio and let's play. You know, because yeah. then I could really tell who you are. So yeah, and I'm playing, and you know, music helped it. And one thing again, he said, okay, I love the way you play, but no, two and four. No, I don't. I don't want to hear that. You know, Whoa. I like to create a train of you on a percussionist. So I had started playing, you know, more on the cymbals and then, you know, accents on the snare instead of just straight, you know, hitting that two and four stuff. Yeah. And and I said, OK, cool, because, you know, it's like, all right. So just, you know, just vibing, you know, and thinking of interesting combinations and then just accent on the snare. And mm -hmm. so I was like, OK, now. And I got, I did it in that moment. We talked and he was like, you're hired and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. When I walked out of there, you know me, bro. I got on the phone with my buddies. It's like, I come from church. No two and four? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm out here. Yo, listen. Listen, oh. man. I can swim, but bro, you got me out here in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Listen, doing like this, like, mm, mm. bro, it's like swim without your good. arms, bro, <laughs> bro. And I was like, I was like, okay, when yeah. you know, so it's like okay, but then I listened to his syndicate records, mm -hmm. and because he had a percussionist, now it was a now it was more of a communication between the percussionist and the drummer. Yeah. And so once yeah. we once we had a rehearsal at, with the band, then it clicked. I was like, ah, I got it. Yeah. yeah. You know, because percussionist is playing so much and, and, and the shakers are going and it's like, it's this thing. I'm like, okay, I got it. And so then I was into it, you know, but Zawano was like, boom. And that was it. That was yeah. it. Yeah. And it yeah. was, I, I and I spent the next on and off six and a half years playing with him on and off. <clears throat> Any stories? Like, that's like big. That oh man. Like, was it ever oh, like man. story time? He's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Hello? See that? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah, no, no. I ahead. mean, and. Did like did he, did he uh did he tell you any stories about his time playing with like you know being around Miles and everything or anything like that? Oh man, he was talking about he was talking about you know because he used to play also for Dana Washington, you know, playing with Miles, yeah. playing with you know all. He was talking about that, and the the interesting thing is that back in his country, Zalano played in church. That's where he got that accordion sound from. Come on, wow. Look about look at it. That's how so it. his thing was playing in church, and so that's when you really listen to his music, it's really like on some spiritual journey instead of just a guy chopping out. He told yeah. stories, 
you know. Yeah. As I was a person, love to tell stories. So he was yeah. telling me all the weather report stories and all the crazy things they did. <laughs> like one story he told me, he told me, God rest his soul, Jocko, he said they checked into this big hotel, fancy hotel, and they had, you know how sometimes they have a car in the middle of the <laughs> In, uh, in the middle of the hotel as a showpiece or whatever. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, che <yo. laughs> they checking in. All of a sudden, they look at Jocko. Jocko gets in the car and starts driving the car around, <laughs> around the hotel. <laughs> he turns the car on. <laughs> yo, turns the car on <laughs> and starts slowly driving the car in the hotel. <laughs> Like crazy stuff. He told what? me the first time they did. He he told me the first time they did a show with Weather Report and Jock went Jocko's first show. Jocko he started. Uh, <laughs> Joe Zalano is starting a song, and it's Black Market, and Jocko is pouring. He poured all this powder down where he was in his area. He poured all this powder down. And so Joe was kind of like, <laughs> so he goes back on stage and Joe Zalano starts, starts to show up. Boom, 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 boom. You know, he's starting that thing. And when it's time for Jocko to come in, Jocko comes in sliding on a powder. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and he was like, crazy stuff like that. <laughs> Just to make an entrance. Like, he's got a million, a million oh. stories like that where he was, oh. you know, but <laughs> can you imagine? You know, the lights are off and, 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 so, and the curtains are the you know, the lights are down and it's only one spotlight on the on the on the MC and he's getting ready to introduce Weather Boy and while he's talking. Jocko was pouring all his powder down on the in the base area, and and Zion was looking at him like, "We about to start the show. What the hell are you doing? Oh, like, what dude, are you doing?" When he's time to come in. He slides on the powder playing the bass line. Boom. Okay. Boom, boom, all right. So hold on. All right. Yo, let's, crazy. Let's play. Crazy. So wait a minute. Stuff. So you telling me, my man, <laughs> you put the powder down, and then he walks off stage, only to make it get a running off start. Stage. To slide back in with the baseline. To slide in while he could play the bass. Yes, sir. <laughs> right before the show, he did that. Right Unbelievable. before the show. And Unbelievable. Mind you, this is his first. Mind you, this is his first show. This wasn't like they had been together for years. This was Jocko's first show. Oh, what and an so, entrance. Because of person that. Because of Jocko's personality and how he had the job, yeah, he had the job, and never and Joe never looked back. That was his bass player. That was it. And so there were crazy things like that that he would do. That's so and so cool, that's man. you know just to show you, just to show you what kind of people and how they thought back then, yeah, and what to do. So he was telling me they used to like get this. They used to do shows with like Earth, Wind, and Fire, not just the jazz festival. They were yeah. in with Earth, Wind, Fire shows with you know what I mean. So just to show you how open the world was then, because back then we had radio, and most yeah. of radio you can hear all types of music from one station. You didn't have to circle the the globe to find music. Right, you can right, hear right. Everything, every category, and every style of music on one station. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing shows like that, not just festivals and not just their own shows, but they were on shows with, with you know, <clears throat> the, with Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Gladys Knight, and uh, Commodores, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So that you know, that was that. <laughs> yeah, it was that. And every tour, every bus ride, he would just tell us stories, just tell us stories. And you know what? So we just listen to music. I have my headphones on, listening to music all the time. And Zion was like, hey, man, let's, let's talk. He was like, yeah, you uh, know. I said, well, what you listen to? I don't, I don't really listen to that much music. Now. I let it speak through me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, 
Oh my! Well, I got with him when he was he was seventy when I was playing with him. So uh, the music that he made and the music that he heard between that time, you know mm. what I mean? Who am I to tell him? Well, you should be checking out this. You should be checking out that. He's like, yeah. I, I got because I developed my own language, my own spirit through this thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that well, things like that. What about you? Bro? Cause uh, <clears throat> I know you did the, the great Raphael. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, Let's talk about man. that, right? Now. You know what bro. I'm come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The people want to Rel- know. The people. Relate relationships. <laughs> like you said, off the off the kit, off the kit, off the kit, wow. bro. Off the kit, straight up and down, wow. off the kit. Um, that came through. The first gig, I, that came through him coming to a gig that I was doing with an artist that I was MDing, and not the biggest gig, like somewhere here, like at Molly Malone's or something like that. Uh-huh. Like a small, you know what I mean? He comes to a gig, he checks it out, he hangs, and then we part ways, and then I get a call to do a gig with him for this Chris Weber Foundation. Um, wow. At that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. Y- of course. Yeah, just yeah. Chris Webber. You know, who's yeah. that? You just know, Chris Webber, you know, <laughs> playing anniversary, you know, it never rains in Southern California. Let's go. Let's do that right, right now. Matter of fact, <laughs> right now, I'm ready. Let's go. Um, so that was, right. that came through a relationship, man. And then, like, it kind of, I had a gig with them. And mind you, that gig was talk about stepping into, like, some big boy shoes. Um, mm-hmm. like I've already done, like at the time I was doing Macy Gray and I think I did Natasha Bedingfield, maybe, right. even, maybe so like big gigs, but this was like a dream gig for me. Cause you, you know, you grow up listening to this dude's mm-hmm. music and seeing him on house party too. You know what I mean? In the, at the pajama jam party. Yes, Look it up. sir. Right. Yes, sir. And so I walk into the rehearsal space. I walk into his studio, whole different experience, bro. Whole different vibe. I walk into his studio, which is like in the neighborhood, like in North Hollywood, whatever, I walk into his studio and <laughs> I see Jubal Smith over here, original guitar player for the for the Tony Tony Tony's, right? If y'all do Come not know now. who Jubu is, get hip Come now. On. J-U-B-U Come on. Preach, Smith. Preach, brother, preach. <laughs> his playing will inspire you as a musician, not just just he's an yes, amazing sir. guitar player. He's a phenomenal bass player, and his brother is a phenomenal bass player. And like, his brother mind. Eric Smith, okay, and his Pick. brother. <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna leave that alone. Elijah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? But the original bass player for the Tony Tony Tony's Elijah was playing bass. Oh yeah. Uh, the P Funk uh-huh. horn section was there. My man DC from a heart uh, wow. heart for Connecticut was there playing, and like my man BJ okay. can't like it's it's a dope crew. And mind you, I'm like the youngest one there. Right. Oh, Norris Jones used to play with um I think he played with D'Angelo at the time. Guitarist wow. is there playing, so like I'm playing with a bunch of OGs, okay. right? So I'm looking at right, the room that right. I hmm just to just just to give this, and then I'm gonna go on. I learned something that day on rehearsal from Ray. Just this is my first time working with him. This is the note, uh-huh. guys. Don't noodle when you're playing in rehearsals. Don't noodle. Woo! This is get that in there real quick. Don't noodle. So if 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 there's a downtime, oh happening, man, that's a whole that's a whole you just, man, that's a whole other topic. Tell this story, right? and then we're gonna have to circle back to that. <laughs> Yo, Jubu and Elijah start grooving on something. Guitar and bass start grooving on something by themselves. Everybody's just not playing, talking, trying to figure out parts and right. stuff like that. I'm on the drums, right. and I see them grooving, and I'm like, and I go to go pick up my drumsticks. Ray looks at me like, and I'm like, right. put the drumsticks down. He walks up to me. He was like, hey, man, the quickest <laughs> way to lo- he was like, the quickest way to lose a gig is to do that. And I was like, whoa, yeah. mind blowing for me. I never like so whenever right. anybody's playing, whenever I'm in rehearsal or at any sound check or whatever like that, and there's nothing happening and it's not time for me to play, I don't play. 
No noodling. Come Don't come play. On, Yo, brother. if you want, come if you want a noodle, come if you want a noodle, brother. have your drum pad next to you. Come if you want to figure brother. out some stuff, and most of them, and most of them don't even want to hear that <laughs> at all. At all, because they're working. Because they're working out. They're working on the production. Yep, the production. See, that's another thing. That's another thing. When you get the production, got to coordinate. Got to coordinate. Look, look, look. bam. Bro, you got a mushroom belt and a mushroom so, jacket. Bro, mushroom jacket, you understand know me? <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do, a mushroom ring? Huh? Ooh. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Bro, but like, all right. So, 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 to certain levels, when you get to levels like that, though, real quick, when you get to certain levels like that, where you're talking about people like. Raphael Sadiq, you know what I mean? And yeah. Joe Zawin, the same. Joe Zawin, no. Bro. No. Yeah, when man. You, you're in rehearsal, well, you're in sound check. If it's not time for you to play, don't play. Because it's their mind yeah. is about the production. And so it's yeah. more to it than just playing thing. Facts. Facts. I'm not even going to go into like what you could be doing in that time. I'm not even going to do it. Right. We're just going to move right. on. We're just going to move on from that. So right. that game right. happens. Because you could, you could actually, you could actually understand the song first before you start noodling. <laughs> Seriously, yo, yo, guys will, right. figure, guys will figure out their space. Guys will figure out the open spaces before they figure. out the actual song and what they what it means and what it's saying. Nah, listen. <laughs> what is the point? Like, why are you noodling in the first place? That's my question. Right. What are you trying right. to figure out that you haven't already figured out? Figured out in your practice time prior to the rehearsal. Right. That's a whole other conversation. What else? Do, a whole other conversation. <clears throat> what more do you need to figure out? On the drums, on the actual when you, drum when set. You, when, you, when you're on that level, you actually, what, what, when I started playing for artists like that, not, you know what I mean? When you're on that level, you actually, as a drummer, you go to sound check at least an hour ahead of the band. So you can do all the things that you need to do, get your sound together. You know me, I'm really, I'm really about sound tuning, all that kind of stuff. So I need that hour. So I get there an hour ahead, do what I gotta do. So by the time sound check come, it's like, okay, whatever, whatever the work is, let's do that work. I don't yeah. need to know. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially if the sound check is when the artist is there. They don't want to hear that at all. Facts. They don't they're, want none of that. They're looking at they're, they're, they're looking at the lights, they're looking at how much room they have on stage. They're looking like if they're gonna walk off stage and come back on stage. They're looking yeah. at that. They're looking at if I go into the audience, how I'm getting back. Uh, if I have, you know, they're thinking about all time with the screen behind you, what's playing during the, you know, what's showing at the yeah. time of the song or that something. Like they're thinking about a million other things, not yeah. to even include the, where the company is gonna be, where the record company is gonna be, where the management is gonna be. They got all these other things in mind. You know, so noodling and that time just like I can't, you know, it's like yeah. somebody that won't that won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing, man. It's like, yeah, it's like somebody that just right. won't stop to, like it's a real thing. But like, okay, so yeah, it's real. That's that that's a whole nother perspective. Like like that's a whole nother thing. Like that's that can go deep right. too, man. So I I do right. that gig, it's cool. I go and do Natasha Bedingfield. We're out on the road during the we're doing a Verizon Wireless tour. Um, uh -huh. We're out and oh, just Verizon Wireless. Yeah, okay. No, just, yeah, yeah. Nobody Keep cares. Going. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Verizon no. Yeah, all right. Whatever. I'm an AT and T. Guy, I'm AT and T oh. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he 
you hear me out? No. Um, <laughs> no, I can't. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm in. So we're in New Orleans at the time, and I get a call from Ray. Like, and mind you, like he always calls from an unknown number or something like that. So I, I don't normally pick up numbers that I don't know, right? I think it's like you know telemarketers. Uh-huh. Who knows? But. Right. I pick up. I'm like, hey, he's like, yo, this is Ray. What's going on? This is not so I'm like, yo, what's going on, man? How are you doing? Like, why are you calling me? You know what I mean? So surprised. Right. He calls me to, to do the uh, the tour for the, uh, the uh, Stone Rolling record. Wow. You know what? I, you, you remember that record? Um, it's yeah. one. Yeah. yeah Super yeah, Stone yeah. Rolling. And I'm like, yo, Woo. I have a conundrum right now because I want to go do this tour. I w- I love this right. record. I want to go play this record, but I'm already out with Natasha. So I'm talking to like some of the OGs right. on the gig, and they're like, "Yeah, don't don't make a move, don't do that, because it'll ruin your reputation, and people will now think that you're just one of those guys that jump jump in and out of tours whenever they get the opportunity." I'm like, right. All right, cool. So I so I let it go. That's I another stay on topic the tour. right there. Go ahead. Another dude. Keep going. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. I want to so, bring your momentum. Go ahead. Nah, it's all good. <laughs> So, so I finished the tour with Natasha. I let it go. I finished the tour with Natasha. This past 2020 or 2019, Ray puts out the Jimmy Lee record. Now, mind you, mm. uh, before that record came out, I did. He called me to do a uh, uh, a pilot show with the my with my Rudolph. She was doing like a wow. like a yeah. She was doing like a um like a sketch comedy show. With like Fred Allen, like the people from SNL, Maya right? Rudolph. Love Bro. Maya Rudolph. That's all I got to say. Love Maya Rudolph. Go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave that alone. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but my man at the time, my bro, you know, my man at the time was playing with. Uh, he was playing uh, with Ray, but he couldn't do the gig. My man Lamar Carter, he wasn't able to do the gig, okay. so they called me to sub. So I was like, I go in the sub, and that turned out to be a dope situation. So this past Jimmy Lee record comes out. I call, I hear the record, I call Lamar, like, yo, just like, not on like some snake kind of vibe, but like, yo, I'm just curious, like, yo, are you guys getting ready for a tour? Like, I. Are you about to get ready to go out for this record? He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. And I left him alone. And I hit him back. I was like, just so you know, man, I'm not, I'm not trying to headhunt your gig or nothing like that. I'm just like, you know, I love the record. I'm just curious whether or not you're doing it or not. It's like, nah, man, that's all good. I understand. Well, that's my man. Like, it's no shade whatsoever. I'm not, we, we don't, we don't do those things. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. We don't, right. we don't do those things, you know? But right. I <laughs> say about a few months later, even up to the NAM show of 2020, right before the quarantine mm-hmm. started, whatever. Uh, he was out and moving around, and I didn't know. Any, I didn't pay. I didn't look back at it again. I get a call in mm. February. I say like the week before the twelfth, because the twelfth was the first day that I started the gig. He calls me up mm. from an unknown number. I'm like, I'm not gonna pick it up. And then I was like, I, right, I'll pick it up just to see what happens. Whatever, whatever. If it's a telemarketer, I'll just, I'll just hang up. It's nothing. Whatever. I pick up. Right. He's like, hey. He's like, Sean. I'm like. Yes. It's like, yo, this is Ray. I'm like, Raphael's like, yeah. It's like, where you at? It's like, I'm in New York. It's like, oh, no, he, I asked him, I was like, where are you at? He's like, I'm in New York, man. You still out here? I'm like, no, I live in Los Angeles. I've been out here for 15 years now. He was like, oh, wow. He's <clears> like, hey, man, could you, could you come out and finish this tour for me? <laughs> wow. I'm like, uh, huh? When? When are you talking? He was like, yeah, we start, uh, you would need to come out on Tuesday. I'm like, mind you, <laughs> you, I'm getting ready for a gig that I have in San Jose. Do you you know Dave Cook and Shana still? Um, Do you? No. No? Okay. <clears throat> New York, New Yorkers, New Yorkers, jazz and like pop. Like he, and Dave MDs for uh, Taylor Swift. I don't know if he still does it anymore, but okay. I had to get with them with Shayna okay. in San Jose, like a but a few weeks from then, not a couple of weeks, no less, right? I'm like, uh-huh. Ray's calling me to do this tour. I want to do the tour. I don't know what's happening. He's like, yo, we need you out here. I know you can do it. 
would you be down? Of course I'm down. Right. So now I'm in like, yo, straight up like, like hustle mode, trying to figure out how to get out of this, this gig that I have with people that I consider my family, like friends, you know what I mean? Like close. I call right. Dave. Uh -huh. I'm like, yo, I just got this call from Ray. He wants me to come do this tour. I don't know what to do. I, I want to say yes, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging. How do I handle this situation? My man walked me through the whole thing. Relationships. Mm -hmm. Relationships, right. bro. He walked me through the whole thing. Off he was like, kit. yo. Off, off the, the kit. kit. Off the kit. Yeah. He's like, yo, this is what yeah. you do. Because he was like, uh, you should have already had your sub in place. I know it's last minute. Already had your sub in place. If there's if there's like a, a plane ticket that's already been paid for, have the money ready to pay for his flight ticket and everything. Make sure that they're ready with the music. All good. Right. Some of those things I wasn't <clears throat> able to do because some of the guys that I had in mind, uh, you know, it's a trust thing. They wanted to use their guy from New York, and I'm like, yo, all good. Comfortability is a. I'm with right. you. I want your. I want your foundation to be solid. So like yo, right. I told my wife, I told my wife what was going on. She was like, yo, take care of the flight tickets so you can go make this. Go ahead, do it. Thank God for a good woman. You dig what I'm saying? Right. Pay for the flight yes, ticket. Yes, Lord. Thank God for a good woman. <laughs> Come on, man. Pay for the flight ticket. Told him what's going on, so on and so forth. He was like, You all good. Thank you. It's like we're still gonna give you, we're still gonna give you a hard time, just so you know. You're on Shana's poo-poo list, but Right. Congratulations, man. Go do your thing. And I'm like, yo, thank you, bro. Thank you for looking after me. Thank you for right. looking out for me. And I go out like that time that I was going to spend working on her music. I spent like like two a days working on his. So I had right. Tuesday. This is I say this is about Thursday. So I had from Friday until Monday. I was flying out on Monday. Wow. You know what I mean? And so. Yo, man, I don't know if you can cuss on here, bro. I'm sorry. I busted my ass, bro. <laughs> Two days, man. Two days, bro. I'll go in. I'll go in from nine until <laughs> nine until two. Go chill a little right. bit. Go get something to eat. Go back in at seven. Be in there from seven to right. midnight, one o'clock. Yo, and just and just busted my ass trying to learn this dude's music. And sure enough, right. like I posted it. <clears throat> I, it's all it's all up on YouTube. Like I did like a little vlog, you know. <laughs> I did a vlog of talking about it and everything. And like, yo, my mm -hmm. rehearsals with them were my sound checks. Wow. That, you know, long, like, you know, Pretty much. straight up and down. And like, yo, man, I love the music, bro. I love, I loved his music, man. I, I still, to this day, man, I still practice it, bro. There's still songs in there that I still feel like I need to work on. Just so when I, we sit down again, whenever this quarantine lets up, or if he calls me back to do the, mm -hmm. you know, to finish up the tour or whatever, I want to sit down and mm -hmm. I want to just live. I want to be, I just want to swing yeah. on the swing, bro. Go down that slide, yeah. monkey bar that mug, and just like live, <laughs> just freely. You know what I mean? Because, well, that's you know... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. No, because I, I respect him and his music. And like, yo, like, my boys tell me, man, like, yo, when you're playing for the OGs, man, you're playing classics. So play them like they're classics. You know what I mean? And even his newer music, man. That's, like, what, I I, was gonna, that's what I was going to say. When yeah. you're playing for people like that, when you're playing for people like that, they actually, they don't want to hear you rehearse. Yeah, <laughs> not, they are not. They are not there. They are not there to rehearse. Yeah, you understand what I mean. They Especially wrote the music. if you tell them, how, you understand. They wrote it. They, they, you know, they, they in production mode already. So yeah. when they send you the music, know it. So when you get there, you fall right in, and they're like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, they're yes. not. They, when they. Call you out when they call you out and you gotta go there. They don't want to hear you rehearse. Yeah, <clears throat> dude, I had I had the same thing happen to me when I was working with Alejandro Sanz. Talk I, about my it. friend, Let's go. my friend, my friend who was in a band, guitar player. He's now the MD, <clears throat> uh, Mike Zero. He's now the MD, but he was just a guitar player then. And mm -hmm. when I got called, I was playing with Joe Zawinul. 
and I was actually supposed to do a tour with Josano, but it was only two weeks long, where Alejandro's thing was like two and a half months. So mm -hmm. I gave way in advance notice because I got my schedule in like May and the tour didn't happen until July. Okay. So Joe's tour was the same time. So he had three months because he already had a list of guys he liked to play with. If it wasn't yeah. me, it was Paco. If it wasn't Paco, it was Kareem Ziad. If it wasn't Kareem Ziad, like he had a couple of drummers that he enjoyed playing with. So I knew it would be easy for him. Again, yeah. knowing the person, knowing the personality of that person, you know what yeah. I mean? I knew that everything would still be cool. So I go fly out now. He, Alejandro had like 30 songs on the list with, you know, inclu Yo. included was like two medleys. So it's like, I listened to that music every single day when I got it. Yeah. So by the time I got, when I, by the time I got to our first rehearsal, it was really just a matter of ironing out some of the breaks. But as far yeah. as the songs, I knew every song. Yeah. Because they had already been playing it and they had already been they had already been touring seven, eight months. They had eight months into it. Yeah. So again, talking about again, talking about music and music business. If you're eight months into something and now you have to rehearse, you don't want to rehearse after you've been playing something for eight months already. So how Fast. disrespectful would it have been I came Whoa. in a new guy and then I'm prepared? I'm sorry. You sorry, understand what I'm a, saying? That, that was like that was a <laughs> that was a mind blown moment. How disrespectful that is. <laughs> Dude, oh. it's disrespectful because now it's extra time for everybody else now. Yeah, yeah. They have, Facts. they have to now spend extra time on something that they have already been doing. Yeah. So for me, as soon as Mike, I said Mike sent me the music. Mike sent me the music. I listened to that. I listened to nothing else but that for three months. Yeah. Three months. Yeah. So by the time I got there, I was pretty much already in a groove. He came yeah. to one sound check. This is how this was. He didn't even come to rehearsal. He came to he didn't come to the rehearsals because he didn't want to rehearse. He yeah. came to a sound the sound check the day before because we would always have a sound check the day before because it's set big. You know they have the screen. They have you know what I mean. So I had uh, we had uh, a full day. And then the next day he came to the rehearsal. And then the day after that was the show. So yeah. he came in and, you know, I, we're playing the songs. And after the after the third song, he just turns around and said, he gave me the good fellas. Like, you're good. You're good. <laughs> What's that? But again, when we're talking music business, we, you know, the, the etiquette of that is, is if somebody calls you in and they've been doing something a long time already and they send music beforehand, be up on your work and on your craft. Because yeah. if you show up and you don't know what you're doing, that's disrespectful, man. Yeah. Disrespectful. Yeah. And a lot man. of guys also lose work because they did that. Like I Facts. got I got called to do something because a because a drum had six on his rider and he showed up to the rehearsal before the day of the gig with no sticks. And he was like, where my sticks at? It was on a rider. And the guest was like, well, we didn't get it. We've been doing handling the production stuff. We didn't get that yet. And they were like, so you mean to tell me you showed up, you, you don't have any sticks? I got fired on the spot. I called from somebody else like, yo, come do I need you to do it. I know, I know you always. I, I walk around with my stick bag like it's a part of me. And this get like, how do people? How do people disrespect other people's time like that? Yeah. And energy, energy because yeah. while we're rehearsing, while we're listening and studying the music, there's the office people organizing VIP, organizing management, organizing what the 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 artist particulars are we're organized you know what i mean like there's so much other stuff that's going on 
they should not have to worry about music, which is our job. Mm -hmm. Why should they worry about your job? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So and that's like, your job. That's, that's like a whole other thing. Yeah, that's your job. That's not even them worrying about you as a person. If they're worrying about you right. as a job, you actually being able to do the job, that's it. To me, I've never seen many people come back from that. Personality issues, I've seen people come yeah. back from that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, these people just don't work well. well you can't, you can like, yeah, and, and you can, and again, it's the situation. It all depends on the situation. Like one personality may work for one situation and may not work in another. Facts. You know, well, so again, yeah, part, yeah. Of our, part of our yeah. gift, part of our gift is also, you know, you got to read the room. Yeah. Room yeah. that you're in, you got to read the room that you're in. How many times you we make a set list, you know, and then you get in the room, and it's like, we're gonna change it up. We need to start yeah. this way, or we need to end this way. You know, and sometimes that happens right before the show. Why? Because you're reading the room. The same yep. thing works in business. Successful CEOs read the room. They already mm -hmm. know who's gonna put in the work and who's not gonna put in the work. They already yeah. know if I could take this guy and this lady and introduce them to my other millionaire friends, they won't embarrass me. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. all relationship 90% relationship, only 10% of the playing. But at yeah. least have that down. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? If you at least down in, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Cause the situation at the very least. all the time they're gonna change. Yeah. Yeah. And fast and fast and without notice. Very fast. Very fast. I would say I, as you were speaking, I was thinking about it like we are to be as prepared as we possibly can so when there are changes to be made, our adjustments aren't so drastic. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like our right. adjustments shouldn't be. Okay, so what have you ever had like a really big, like a like an eye-opening big oops moment on a gig. You know what I mean? Like a like what, what was your Ooh. biggest that kind of like that 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 really kind of puts you on the path of like you know being up being an upright, being more about your business as a musician and as a drummer, no less. You know what I mean? Man. Well, I mean, as a drummer, I'm sure we've we've all had those oops moments where either the the head bust or the you know, if you're playing some, on some other rented stuff, the equipment, mm -hmm. made the, the, the pedal, the spring on the pedal break or something like that. Dude, I was on the gig. We were doing a festival, okay? And the spring, at the spring, bro, I was using some other equipment. <clears throat> Just so y'all know, it wasn't DW and it wasn't Grant. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't my fault either. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my ball it was some it was some rented some old rented crap I don't, I don't even remember the name rented stuff that i had to play on okay and we play in and the the pedal breaks and we're in the middle of a gig so instead of and they're looking at me like, because you know when that kick goes out, it's like air just left. Yeah. Air just left the room. Yep. And so what I did was I played with my right hand. I played the kick pattern on the floor top. Yep. It's church. And just straight up. The, and just played the, played the rest of the gig like that. But that first, that first 15 seconds. Bruh, they were looking at me like, yo, like they were going to put me on a grill and just fry me, bro. <laughs> How much more of the gig did like, you have left? Okay. Dude, this is this is the, in the beginning of the first set. Oh, God. We, we had two full, we had two full hour and a half sets. This is with, this is with. 
Dude, with this is within the first half hour of the gig. And so all I did was I played the rest of the gig, the rest of the two hours I played playing the kick pattern on the floor time with my right hand and then playing the snare and hi-hat and crash with my left hand. What kind of gig was this, if I may ask? Oh, this was some festival at, at, on, a, on a pier in New York. But what kind of what kind of vibe? What kind of what kind of music? Oh, oh, the summer, summer joint, and we we just playing a, a, a cover cover thing. It was like okay, some okay, okay, okay. Corporate, um, big some big corporate yeah party festival type thing. You know how they do on on a pier on the seaside where they invite all their millionaire friends and everybody come mm -hmm. you know come and hang out drink or whatever. And this is something yeah. that they do annually every yeah. year. They do this. Yeah, and so you so, play like rock, rock with dude. you on the the bass drum. Oh yeah, <laughs> bruh, bruh. Let me tell you, man. When I left, yo, after the game, my right arm looked like freaking Popeye, bro. Oh shoot, just huge and my just forearm, my forearm, my forearm was like my forearm was like this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was walking oh. around looking, looking outside it like a mug, boy, because I had my forearm was burning. But it was like, okay, oh. I just I had it's gotta do. You just got to do. Oh. <laughs> bro, I, was looking like, I was looking like I was looking like a chocolate Popeye. <laughs> you ever seen? You ever seen the League of Extraordinary Women? <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So, so like the, the, the Jekyll and the Hyde dude that takes the medicine at the end of the movie is like one of his arms right. is like stringy, <laughs> the other one is like a little. Yo. You know what I mean? It's like. Bruh, bruh. <laughs> bruh, I was walking around. I was walking around clotheslining people when I was just trying to hug people. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is hilarious. But man, thank, God, thank God we don't have no problems. Thank God we don't have no man. problems over here. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> come on. What come about on, you, bro? What was your what was your oops moment, man? Come on, I know man. you got one. <laughs> man, I think I have too many because <laughs> I can't think of one. <laughs> I think of I, I think of this one in particular. I mean, all right, this because the most recent, this last tour we did, uh, Ray has the med medley of songs that he he co-wrote with people, and uh, the last uh -huh. like one of them is like uh, "Cranes in the Sky" by Solange, right? So right. we're playing, uh, we we're playing the song, and like he'll have the crowd sing sing the verse to see if they know the verses, or whatever, and like you know. <laughs> Most most right. of them do. Some of them don't. The rare moments that they don't is kind of a. It's, it's funny, but I'm we're playing this song and then we're getting towards the end and they keep singing and whatever and we're thinking that they're about to end it short. So I start to end it short and then they keep they keep going and I'm like ah, so to the point where it was so noticeable. Real is like man, we didn't think y'all was gonna get it. Even Sean Wood back here didn't even think y'all was gonna get it, huh? It's like y'all, y'all done confused Sean Horton back here. My man put out my whole gun, I was like, and but it was cool. It was cool because, like, you know, like this is like I'm just getting on the tour or whatever. Things is cool. Right. I guess they feel comfortable. They feel like, oh yeah, this is things is cracking again, kind of vibe. And so he cracks like right. it's kind of like you know, it's an icebreaker. So it's like, right, right. right. You made a mistake. It's all good. It's all fun. We're not mad. Whatever. It was a joke afterwards. Right. So it was like, oh okay, right. You know, but it was, you know, <laughs> so noticeable same, same though. Thing with, same same thing with me. I was doing this thing with. Um, I used I was was part of the Sony showcase band. So we would put yeah. on a show. You know what I mean? And so yep. there's this artist, there's this group that Michael Bivens, of course, from New Edition, he was producing yeah. he produced them. Yeah. But we were rehearsing. So the first day of rehearsal, I show up again thinking I'm I know all the music, right? Whoa. And so we play it and he loved it. The first day of rehearsal. 
So we get to the second day because now the second day is right before the actual the the the, the pre gig joint and then then the gig. So the sound check like pre show before the actual show. So the day we, so the next the first day he loves it. Come back the next day, play everything the same way. Everything is killing because I know you know how it is the, the repetition yeah. and then yeah hear what what they produce. So he stops one song. Hey man, that, that kick pattern is wrong. I was like, what? He said the kick pattern is wrong. I'm like, yesterday you were loving this joint. He's like, yeah, yeah, but it's wrong. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he played the music, and just the first, the first thirty seconds of it was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> but I didn't get mad at him. But I was like, dude. We spent we spent ten hours yesterday. You were loving this yeah. for ten hours yesterday. Now all of a yeah. sudden, but sometimes things happen like that. Where yeah. and it's all about how you react to that. Yeah, as if people don't want because that's going to carry further than your mistake. Facts. How, Whoa. How you handle your mistakes is more important than you actually making a mistake. And that's what people, that's what people in this business don't understand. It's not that you made a mistake, more so how you handled the mistake. My man. Because sometimes, sometimes people make light of like that thing with Ray. If he said Shama, and if you would have got offended, even he was just making light of it. But if you got offended, you done it. it. Been. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more. One so, more. One more. One more. I give you 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 one more. <laughs> I give you one more. I give you one more. This people is this th this is this is a green person. Me, that's a leprechaun. Leprechaun. To help me with the spelling. Um, right. This is a green person's reaction to making a mistake. Okay. We're in we're in Denmark right. with Macy. Uh huh. Woo. Just so you know, we're in Denmark. This is I started with Macy. In 2006, uh -huh. we made it to Denmark. <clears throat> okay, I say this to say that right. I've been playing her music all the way up until we made it to Denmark. Okay, right. it's a long time, just a mm -hmm. long. Just, right, we did the U.S., we did, and we're in overseas. And I've been playing music the same right. way the whole time. We get to rehearsal, a sound check, and we're in there playing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, ah. I'm gonna try to do my best Macy impersonation. She's like, <laughs> she says, she says, I think, I think I need to go with my music some more because it's it's not it's not feeling sexy enough. It's not feeling right. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, okay, uh, you know, but we've been playing the same way for this. It's not, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Y'all, right. y'all work on it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to my dressing room. Okay. Right. After sound check, she, after sound check, she calls me and she calls me in her office, her dressing room, with me and uh, uh me me and our MD. She uh -huh. said, "Shot." She's and this is how this this statement now plays a right. huge part in my life. Now, are you happy? Uh -huh. She's like, "Are you happy on this gig?" Wow. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. She's like, "Then why aren't you playing my shit right?" Bro. <laughs> Bro, I was like uh I'm playing I'm I'm playing from the references that was given to me from when I started the gig. It's like, no, right. no, that's not right. That's not right. That's not the record. That you're playing all the live stuff. I want you to play everything like the record. I want you to play my shit. I was like, uh, but now, how you deal with mistakes or situations is not trying to pile it over to or delegate or try to throw it back on whoever gave you the responsibility to do it. But my MD exactly. gave me, I'm not worried about what she gave you. I'm worried about you having my music in your pod, iPod and learning my music so you can play my shit right. She wanted her right. shit to play right. <laughs> right. She, you know what I mean. She wanted me to play her music right. She wanted me to play it like the record. So, right. 
me taking it upon myself and really understanding that nothing I say anymore in this situation is going to make me look better or look good. So right, right. <clears throat> I go from that meeting, tail between legs, feeling very distraught. Mm -hmm. I go and buy her whole catalog. I go on iTunes, go right. buy all of her records, and I listen to all of them, especially all the songs that we play on the show. I come back during the show, right. play the songs. After that show, that's how you play my shit. Right. You got it. <laughs> you got it. So that just came from me taking responsibility for my own actions. You know what I mean? Like, yo, if they, any anybody, people will forget a bad gig, but they won't forget a bad attitude. They will not. <clears throat> and the thing, and the funny thing is that, you know, back to the Michael Bivens, we wound up laughing. Because he made light of it. Because, you yeah. know, he's a little, he's good. So it was like, yeah. yo, man, play. yeah, but yesterday we were like, and we just started laughing about it. But yeah, it, it's interesting to bring that up as, you know, a record and a live thing. Mm -hmm. Whenever and when an artist, and if there's a new artist that I'm working with and I don't, and I don't particularly know them well, I listen to their records first. Yeah. I study their records. Because and when you get a live situation, now you're studying that person's interpretation of the music and not the record, not exactly. the artist's music. So you yeah. can make a mistake playing what somebody else played, and it's not the actual feel of the actual artist's stuff. So whenever I play with an artist, I always, I always ask them, give me the record, give me the record. We can yeah. go or we can go, listen, we can in a rehearsal, in a band rehearsal, we can go over the accents all day. That's the extra, that's fine. That's yep. fine. I don't mind having, I'd rather learn that than learn the music. Give yeah. me the music. So if I'm yeah. in front of the artist and we play it and the song feels good, they're like, okay, yeah, see, on, on live, though, we do a break here so I can do this. Okay, cool. And they actually have a better attitude with that. But if you got all that live stuff going and you don't know the music, then you're in trouble. So my advice to people playing with artists, get their record. Because yeah. nine times out of ten, that's what they want. <clears throat> yeah. How many times have the artists looked at you, looked back at you and said, wow, it feels good to hear my record? Oh, many or times. Or anything related to that. You know what I mean? Many, Dude, many, many I, times. Many times. Many on many times. occasions. The only, the only time, the only time you'll get somebody that's uh, stuck to the live joint. And you know what's funny though? You know, you don't really get the big artists don't have that attitude. Mm -hmm. it's the middle and little artists that have that attitude because there's mm -hmm. so much into the Again, they got their performance chops. They don't have their personality chops going. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's interesting. It's so interesting that people are cooler up here than down than trying to get there. The ones yeah. that are trying to get there. <clears throat> because yeah. when in the rehearsal with Alejandro, we went over a couple of accents. We didn't rehearse the song. You understand right. what I mean? It's, a, yeah. it's from going over particulars and then getting the vibe and feel of a song. Mm -hmm. I knew this. So when he said I was good, he was saying because I knew his music. Yeah. You understand? And yeah. so other stuff, you can rehearse that. And he understood, okay, yeah, this is, a, this is live. This is what we do. This is what we do. Okay. And he understood that reason we need to rehearse. He didn't yeah. want no artist would understand. And that you don't know their music, and now we gotta rehearse. Why mm -hmm. are you here if you don't know? Their music? Yeah, yeah. They might yeah. as well get on the drums and play it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like always oh. playing with some. Get that. Get the record. It's get worth the it. record. And it's so worth. You it. got the record. Then listen to. Then listen to the live. Yeah. And they be like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? But know the music, though. One yeah. thing for one thing, know the music. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, interesting. Like, okay. with Rick, go ahead. 
No, go, go, no, go, go, go. Like, like with like with that being said, it's like some people kind of get it misconstrued. Knowing yeah. the music doesn't necessarily, and when I say like, I, I I tend to say know it verbatim, right? That doesn't mean mm -hmm. know the drummer's chops verbatim. Exactly. It doesn't mean that. It means know the form of the song, know the song. You know what I mean? And, and the, the drummer's feel playing, of the, and the, the feel, feel of the song. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do what they play, the drum feel that they play, but you can do something right. similar to it. They're not looking for all of that. They're right. looking for my song has a straight up straight eighth type of vibe going, and it's like right. it's like it's like a true, it's like a train. All the drum fills are very sparse and open. They're not condensed and small and fast. I need right. that. The right. drum tones sound like this. If you can provide me with that, like this. Right. I mean, like, yo, what other way can you? It's like, man, how do you? You have to get to know the girl first before you can actually like start like courting. You know what I mean? Like that part. Like, yo, what do they like? What like? Okay, this it's that mindset. Like, yo, the the song has a low five snare drum sound. I'm not gonna come in with right. my five by fourteen to mid to high. No, nah, that's crazy. I'm not doing that. This is the song right. sound. You know right. what I mean? <clears throat> If it, it with an implied eighth note, I'm not gonna play just like implied quarter notes just because it this feels better. No, this is the song, and this is the vibe. Man, great, great segue, yo, great segue, great segue into equipment using. Okay, Ooh. now here's the thing. Here's the here's the thing about about kits. Okay. And here's the mm -hmm. thing about drums. <clears throat> what I learned with Gretsch, when I got to Gretsch, and this is the this is the truest thing I've ever gotten from equipment. I when I had my previous kit, when I wanted a certain sound, I had to switch drum heads to manipulate the sound. Yeah. When I got to Gretsch, I did all I had. I could use the same heads that I wanted to use. I just had to tune it differently. Yeah. So it was interesting to come to Gretsch to know I don't have to do anything extra to manipulate the sound. Gretsch is already ready with sound. All, of, all you're doing now is just detuning or tuning differently. Yep. And so you can't, you can't take that philosophy everywhere else. You understand yeah. what I mean? So, so when I got, so it's funny. So when I got my first Gretsch kit, I joined Gretsch in 2016 in the middle mm -hmm. of a tour. Now my previous yeah. company with not my previous company, I was with 20 years. So mm -hmm. I played here and there, you know what I mean? And I've always loved the sound of Gretsch. That yeah. was never an it was just that this is where this is where I was at the time. And they had the drums, they had a good sound, but it I was it was still like not what when I got in the middle of a tour, my drums came to New York. I changed the heads on there so that they have uh new heads and then it was sent to Spain. Okay, so the first time I actually actually played the kit was in a sound check. Yeah. And this is this is one. This is how much. This is how much. Yes, sir. That black sparkle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. USA, Man. USA, Man. USA, baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, bro. So, check this out. So, the first time I actually set it up and actually play it is in our first sound check. So we had, mm. uh, we had like three days before the actual first show. <clears throat> I play it fine. So I follow suit. So I have my six by 14 snare, then I have a six and a half by 14 snare. And that six and a half is my deep snare. So yeah, I use, of course I use Evan. So I use a G2 coded on my snares. So, but on this snare, I got a uh, hydraulic. And then mm. I got, I put a hydraulic on it, okay? And so um, we get to sound check and the lows is there but the mids is high as is cut out. And the yeah. engineer like, man, it's, it sounds good, but but some, something's missing. So we do the first show, fine. 
We go to the next city, that sound check. I took off the hydraulic and I just put another G2 coated on my six and a half by 14, but I tuned yeah. it Yeah. on the tuner. I played it, the sound guy's like, yo, what'd you do? What happened? <laughs> When you talk, when you want to talk about, when you want to talk about great, uh, great equipment, hands down, hands down, the only kit I've ever played where I don't have to do anything extra to manipulate sound. Yeah. And that was a lesson for me. I've been playing all my life and that was a lesson for me. And I just learned that five years ago. That's how, you know, so Gretsch, man, jeez. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and so I don't have, I don't ever have to change my normal drum head setup. All I have to do is just tune it the way I want to. Yeah. Whereas most yeah. drummers, we have, we have, uh, we have, we have uh, the, you know, our regular snare, which medium to high pitch, and then we have another snare that we call the deep snare. Yeah. And all the deep, deep sh- always, always a different head. From the regular head with Gretsch, mm-hmm. I don't have to do it at all. Same head so all around. My, my Black Sparkle USA, same thing. My my <clears throat> my current setup that I have, which is actually a Brooklyn, is a five piece. Mm. Right. Same thing. I just same heads. I just tune it to get the sound that I want out of it, and it's like, and it just gives me that anytime, yeah. every time, all the time. Yeah. Come on, man. Consistency, bro. Special, man. Special, bro. Special. The t- yeah. Goodness. And when I hit it, it was the tone that I've, I've been searching for. Yeah. I didn't quite hit it before until mm-hmm. I got this. Yeah. I'm sure you've had that experience with yours. Tell me about yours. I like, okay. So my first Gretsch was, I don't have a picture of it because back in those times, those times, <laughs> they were like we had like yo you gotta have money to have Man, cameras. It's all the time. Have wait, 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 what you times. working on the field, bro? You working on the field? You came from the field Dude. to the set, huh? Well, what was that? Yeah. You so stupid. I was in I think I was in high school, maybe mid first year of community college. Like who had cameras like that? We didn't have camera phones. Right. We right. never had you know what I mean? Like Right. Straight up and start, no cam. We had to like the- <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, remember them cameras? Remember the days of the disposable camera you had to buy from Come the on. We didn't have those cameras, man. <laughs> like, yo, barely have enough money to get your own kit. You know what I mean? Like, we right, church you, kids, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Still, exactly. still my first drum set I bought was a used kit, dude, and it didn't even come with hardware. I traded that right. kit in to get. The new Catalina at the time when it first came out with wow. uh, it, yeah, bro. It was it was maroon with a, a maroon yeah. wrap, uh with a with a hanging floor time, which which right. now I play, you know, and my floor times have stands on them because I can't stand the hanging. But <laughs> but like it came, it came with like you know the Gibraltar Rock Pack pack, symbol hardware uh-huh. pack or whatever. You know what I mean? It was very early right. on. I think. The first Catalina, if I'm not mistaken, but right, but yeah, man, like yo, like even then, I was super geeked. Evans heads on them, G twos right. on the mugs, you know what I mean? And like, I remember right. playing a couple, doing a couple of projects with that with those drums, but no pictures for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like my my right. kit now, the kit Doodle Brown, I call him Doodle Brown. That's this, 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 this my, <laughs> that, that's all right, that's all right. Yeah. Let's see this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, Twilight, baby, Spock come out. on. Come yes. on, come on. She's sparkly. She's nice and sparkly. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doodle brown, that jump for that. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Funky, yeah, funky yeah, drum, yeah. that doodle brown, that drum. Come, come on, Jack. now. Come on, now. But, you know, like, I, I, it's one that, of days, like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's a bad. That's a that's a bad mofo Do that, that right there. Okay. Mm. Okay. 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 <laughs> that's right. Jones got that so glow. Come on. Yes. But like, yes. so let funny. I just thought about. <laughs> just let it shine through. Yeah. Oh, cloud. 
<laughs> so good, man. But like, dude, like for me, that's a uh, you know that kit is the first kit that I got when I came to Gretsch. Um, uh -huh. but like, man, like I've never had a USA custom before. I never had yeah. nothing as nice as that before. I never had it, and I have a couple of star, uh, not star classics, wrong, uh, new classics. And I never had nothing this nice mm -hmm. as that before. My Catalina is my first, you yeah. know what I mean? And I didn't get those right. until about 19. I never had a drum wow. set like that. I never, first drum set at 19, my own money. Mm. If I were to be honest, my first drum set was my bed. Right. Mine too. Bro, right. let me tell you. The bed, and don't forget the pots and the pans. And if you were lucky enough to have a washing machine, the Love bottom it. on it, like, bro, I got beat. I got beat. I got beat every day. My mother come home from work. <laughs> She's looking around like, bro, I come what home. is this? Bro, I come <laughs> home from work. She got, I got all the pots. And pants on the floor right next to the washing machine. But that was that was my <laughs> straight up. Man. Straight up, dude. Sure. Like man, yeah, like you know, dude. I, I, I feel like like the with all the gigging that I've done, I found out why I love Gretsch so much. Because when you're mm -hmm. doing, you know, when you're getting so much, you have to backline gear. So you're getting all different types of right. drums that you have to try to tune. Mm -hmm. And like for me, I found my tuning process with Gretsch is right. the easiest. One, because I always get the tone that I the want from easiest. it. The easiest. The easiest. I right. always get the tone that I want from them drums, man. Yeah. And like, and right. it makes e it makes it easier for me to tune from uh, from in front of the drums. If you think about it perspective wise, I'm tuning for the mics right. and for the front of house, right? Right. So. Right. My whole perspective on that, which is why now I went from three up, two down to like one up, two down. It makes it right. difficult. And now and then I'm studio ready, no matter where I go. Right. Right. You know what I mean? If you go in any studio you go into, you're going to find a drum set with one up, one down. You know what I mean? So right. now I'm able to. Right. And then they're right. always tuned for the studio or they're always tuned for the mic. That's Ooh. my like Steve Steve Gad perspective. You know what I mean? Like every time he plays, his drums always sound studio ready. Always, any record, any he always sound like he's recording. <clears throat> when he plays, he always sounds like he's recording. Like Facts. these are the drummers we're listening to. So of course, that's the way out. That's the way we want to be. You dig what I'm saying? So I'll be that guy yeah. on Gretsch doing just that. You know what I mean? And so when they hear it, me too. They want. It won't be a question, dude. I, like I know, uh, dude. Listen, to, like I know your sound. I know what you. I know your drums are gonna be sounding open, <laughs> and fat, and big. I know. I know. That's it. That's it. You know what I mean? Like that's it. That, that's it. Ha! How can I say it? That great great sound. Take that. You know what I'm saying? That, that great great sound. Come on, come on now. Ah. I think that's in the Bible somewhere, bro. That's that's in somewhere. the Bible somewhere. Yeah. That's a yeah. That's in one of that's in one of those books preachers don't preach from. That's like in like yeah. Timothy. Or ah, ah, hallelujah! Ah. <laughs> Bang them drums with that great great sound. Ah, that good, that ah. great good sound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's that's in Second mm. Timothy. I think it's in the Bible. <laughs> come on, come on, man. I mean, all right, all right. I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna say, this. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna go. Just for my Go damn, ahead, my buddy. damn, my damn folks, you know what I mean. We got drums being made after <laughs> our drums. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We, you know, people are making drums <laughs> to sound like our drums. You, I'm just, you know, I'm just leaving it at that. So, you know, no you shame. Know, come on now. No come shame. on now. Come you know what I mean? But that that silver on. interior means something. Just so you know, that means something, people. Mm hmm. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? You understand? You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From jazz all the way up. You They're know what I mean? Trying to get beautiful, open, full tone as Gretsch always has. With diecast hoops, no every, less. Every series with diecast, of course. Diecast die hoops, homie. And that's, that's supposed to choke the sound. <laughs> Come on, man. Facts. That's supposed to choke your sound. Diecast is supposed to choke your sound. Come on, bro. But my sound ain't choking, Bruh. baby. It's singing. Open. It's, like, 
Well, not at the singing, singing, singing. Come on. Come on. Well, listen, bro, this has been all my fun. And we got, I bad. know, we, bro. Bro. We got so much more to talk about, man. Like, I thank, really, we got to do this again. Thank you. Thank y'all. Man, thank y'all for, for having us, man. We, this has yeah. been great, man. Brother, yeah. just spending time with do this all day. <laughs> oh, doggone day. Listen, we haven't even like, all we, day. We haven't even touched on like a lot of things, man. But like, yo, exactly. Just wanna, big shout out to Gretch, Andrew, Jules. Thank you guys for like bringing us together. You know what I mean? Thank you for doing things like thank this. Thank you this so is much. Very, very fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Straight up and yeah. down. <laughs> we love it here. <laughs> Word up, Gretch generations. You know what I mean? That great Gretch song. <laughs> Come on, stop playing. Get that USA. Get that You know what I mean? Come on, come Go on now. Broadcast. Come on now. We love Take it a here. broadcast. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> Word up. All right, y'all. <laughs> my brother, everybody, y'all. Joining us, my brother. You know we gonna talk. You already know. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you real. Like we gonna talk. We get over this straight up. Yes. <laughs> you already know. And Jules, Andrew, thank y'all so much, man. This is much this is love, so y'all. Great. Word up. Yeah. Much love. Much love. Okay. Great generations. I